Good morning, Bullen. I'm Stephen Caius. And I'm Brandon Lubian. Welcome to this edition of WBLN for today, December 9th, 2016. Yesterday afternoon got a little exciting around here, but first, an American hero, John Glenn, a former U.S. Senator and the first American to orbit the Earth, died Thursday. John Herschel Glenn Jr. made history in 1962 when he completed the three-orbit flight in a cramped space capsule called Friendship 7. He later served for nearly a quarter century as a U.S. Senator. In 1998, he returned to space at age 77, becoming the oldest person to ever do so. John Glenn was 95. A short circuit in the electrical box out by the lunch tent was faulty yesterday and had to be replaced. In order to do so, the power in the B and F sections had to be cut off. As precautions, students and teachers were asked to leave and those sections from those sections, and the fire department was also called. Power was later then restored, and it's now back to business as usual. Steven, were you actually in the F section at that time? Yes, I was in the F section. I was taking a class with uh, Mr. Ordunez, the math teacher, and the power just went off. There was this big noise rattling around and everybody just started evacuating. So that, that must have been what had happened. That was strange. I fortunately was not in the F section. Anyways, after yesterday's mass, Belen received a beautiful gift, a copy of the image of Mary from a fellow Jesuit school in Caracas, Venezuela. The statue has been officially blessed and is on display in the library. So we're very happy to have this image of the Blessed Mother that's in Colegio San Ignacio in Caracas, Venezuela. It's very significant for it to be here because the same way that Belen is a product of the exiles from Cuba who came to Miami and started the school and brought the image of Our Lady of Belen, a copy of it, uh, it's appropriate that the Venezuelan people who are going through a very similar experience like the Cubans went through are here in exile. Uh, bring the Blessed Mother also as a reminder of everything that is good in Venezuela and uh, also a place where they can go in order to be able to remember uh, their alma mater in Venezuela, their country, and, and the people who are there. During Homeroom Wednesday, Miss Ortiz and members of the Belen Choir led an Advent service in the Roca Theater. Advent is a time of waiting and preparation for the arrival of the Nativity, and the choir began the countdown, celebrating the four Sundays of Advent and their themes of hope, peace, joy, love, all leading up to the celebration of Christmas and its theme, Light. If you'd like to see the Advent service in its entirety, you can check it out on our Belen Jesuit YouTube page. Billion dollar bill to boost federal spending for medical research on cancer and other diseases it has, is headed to President Obama's desk. Senators voted overwhelmingly on Wednesday to approve the bill, known as the 21st Century Cancer $6.3 billion to be spent on research to cure diseases, as well addresses crisis and opioid epidemic in the country. This bill takes head on one of the big challenges we face. Curing what today are considered incurable diseases. I don't have to tell any of you that this moment was a very, very long time in coming. <laughs> and we would not be here if it were not for the tireless, relentless work by so many people that are here standing today like Fred Upton. And now we have a lot to show for it. I just want to say to all those legislators here, fantastic. You guys did such a good job. The law provides $4.8 billion to the National Institutes for Health for Health for Medical Research, $500 million to the FDA to help speed up the approval of drugs, and $1 billion in grants for states to battle the opi opioid crisis and includes provisions to address mental health issues. President Obama is expected to sign this bill. The Syrian government now has almost total control of Aleppo. Rebels have pulled out almost completely from the old city after days of fierce fighting. Thousands of Syrians are fleeing from the city or cramming into the remaining rebel-held spots trying to survive. The action of the terrorists action in killing the people. The second one is the action of the terrorists in order to paralyze the life in Syria, attacking schools, destroying uh, infrastructure in every, uh, in every sector. Uh, third, the embargo of the West that pressed many Syrians uh, to, to find their livelihood outside Syria. This is, these are the main reasons, and if you can see that the second factor and the third factor are related, I mean the role of the terrorists and the West 
in undermining in hurting the livelihoods of the Syrian is one and uh, let's say is commonality between the terrorists. Here's your scoop for today. Registrations are now open for the February 16th to 17th Car Nair Experience Retreat. Applicants are available in the Campus Ministry Office or in G202 with Ms. Sosa. And now to Ms. Laura with this week's Talking Science. Welcome to our 7th period Honors Anatomy class today. Today we're going to be dissecting a cow eyeball. So, tell us Danny, what are you doing first? First, we're cutting off the sclera, which is this brown circular thing. And it's brown because of the preservatives, but normally it's white. Excellent. Okay, so you're going to flip the eye over to find the optic nerve. It should be in the back. We're going to exit out the back of the eye. Oh, hey guys. So, uh, <laughs> we cut through the cornea. And after cutting through the cornea, we remove the, the, the eye lens. Also, the, the cornea is a protective layer that allows light to go into the eye. <laughs> First, make the incision in the cornea. Immediately, uh, some black clearish liquid will uh, pop out, and that is the aqueous humor. The next step is to cut the sclera out, which is the brownish um, clearish area right here, using scissors. Thank you, Miss Laura. Now stay with us as we bring you weather and sports after these messages. Good morning Wolverines, today we woke up to some rainy weather, it was kind of humid outside and unfortunately it's going to be the same story throughout the day. What the, what the map is going to be showing is that you're going to be having a big storm hitting the Bahamas, not going to be safe for boating and luckily it's only going to scrape us, however that does mean we are going to be experiencing some heavy showers. So what the forecast is going to be showing is we're going to be having a temperature of 74 and a low of 68, relative humidity at 73%, winds going to go north, so that's why I said it's going to scrape us, not really going to hit us directly. And we did have that AM shower, early shower in the morning, and precipitation will be at 30%. So the next three days are going to be kind of rainy also. We will be having some heavy storms Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. However, Monday will be some spotted showers. Highs will be in the low 70s, and unfortunately, Monday will be a high of 81, so it's going to be heating up on Monday. Lows will be in the low 70s, and like I said earlier, chances of rain will vary from 60 to 40%. And with that, let's move it on to sports with Danny Brown. Thanks, Ro, and good morning, Wolverine Nation. It's finally getting a bit cooler and a little nicer to play some sports. Let's jump to the only game of the day, and it was a varsity basketball team facing Miami Springs in a district battle. Belen cruised by Springs, defeating them 76-43. to It was a big week for Belen basketball as they went 3-0 in the district, which now improves their record to 4-0 in district play. Everything else in Belen sports, guys, is an announcement, so let's get started with it. The 6th grade soccer team will host Gulliver Prep at 3.45 p.m. The blue basketball team plays at Northwest Christian. The gold basketball team plays in the ACC semifinals at St. Brennan. Game time is 8 p.m. The varsity soccer team will host Matter Academy at 3.30 p.m. The JV soccer team plays at Columbus. The freshman basketball team will host University School at 4 p.m. And then tomorrow, the wrestling team will compete at Doral. The freshman basketball team plays at St. John Paul. And finally, let's go now to the Miami Dolphins as they face the Cardinals at home in a must-win game. 
We will see what they are all about, as it seems all the other teams in the AFC just win. The game starts at 1 and will be played at the Rock. That's all for sports. Now back to you guys at the desk. Thank you, Brown. Now be sure to follow us on YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook for all the latest news and pictures. I'm Stephen Kayez. And I'm Brandon Lubin. From everyone here at WBLN, thank you for watching. Have a great day, and like always, stay golden, Wolverines. That was a good one. That was good. All right.